the anime starts off on a seemingly ordinary day. Everyone goes about their business, unaware of the tragic fate humanity is about to experience. Soon enough, people start having heart attacks randomly, and chaos ensues as drivers and pilots share the same fate. In the apocalyptic-like wasteland, we see a pink-haired woman leading an army of cloaked figures. Amidst the chaos, we see a ragtag band of orphans running back to their home, the Hayakuya Orphanage. Among the children, we see our two main characters, Mikaela Hayakuya, a blonde, blue-eyed, selfless, and friendly boy, and Yuichiro Hayakuya, a moody, dark-haired, green-eyed boy. As the group keeps running, an announcement blares, informing us that a fatal virus has been released on humans to punish them for their sins. The announcement also notes that there is no cure and that their fate has been sealed. Inside the orphanage, the kids are shocked to find their kind caretaker having succumbed to the same fate as the rest of humanity. The next moment, the announcement continues, noting that any child below the age of 13 has been spared, and the third progenitor, Cruel Tapies, is collecting every child. Not a moment later, a cloaked figure appears at the orphanage window, and with a simple touch, the window shatters into pieces. Another cloaked man casually opens the door, and soon enough, the children find themselves in a military convoy heading to an unknown location. Four years later, we now find out that the cloaked figures are vampires, and they are treating the children they have abducted as livestock, harvesting their blood in exchange for apparently keeping them safe. Yuichiro, now 12 years old, hates the vampires and the way they treat them as objects, refusing to even eat the disgusting food provided. Meanwhile, Mikaela manages to maintain a more positive attitude, noting that at the very least they're still breathing and that they weren't separated from their little family. Yu gets into conflict with some vampires, which he refers to as fangs, in an attempt to seek justice for two little girls, who are harmed by the bloodsuckers for playing in front of them. Although Yu tries his best to make the fangs apologize, he is no match for these supernatural beings. Just as he is about to be thrown off the bridge, Mika tries to plead for his forgiveness. Thankfully, Farid Bathory, a vampire noble and the seventh progenitor, happens to walk by, saving Yu from certain death. <coughs> that the only reason he even stepped in is because Mika has been giving him his blood in private for various benefits, like real food and some privileges. <laughs> we now see a flashback to when you and Mika first met. You went from being an antisocial loner after being abandoned by his parents and almost killed by his father. Mika offered him a chance to become part of their little family, just like the other orphans. Eventually, the two became brothers, ready to do anything to help each other. Surprisingly, their sister Akane informs you that Mika somehow managed to get the ingredients to make real curry, and you now realizes that Mika has been giving his blood to the noble for their sake. Later that evening, Mika returns from Farid's mansion, informing you that he managed to get him a pistol so that he can fight these vampires whom he hates so much. Mika also gives him a map of the city they're in, which they can use to finally escape this cursed place. At night, the two boys lead their family to the escape route they found on the map, and although they manage to avoid danger along the way, <laughs> They're shocked to find Farid waiting for them at the city's exit. He reveals that he has been manipulating poor Mika all along. Without wasting any more time, he directly grabs one of their little sisters and drains her of her blood, throwing her lifeless corpse on the floor. Yu is enraged and tries to attack Farid with his pistol, but the noble easily dodges. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mika is horrified, realizing that his actions have put his whole family in danger. <laughs> As Farid continues taking care of their siblings, Mika turns to Yu, determined to at least allow him to escape. He grabs the gun and dashes towards Farid, but before he can do anything, Farid instantly impales him with his hand and removes the arm holding the gun. Yu manages to grab the pistol as it falls to the ground and gets close enough to headshot Farid, seemingly killing him. Snap. With his dying breath, Mika tells his brother to escape, but Yu refuses to abandon his family. In a desperate attempt, he tries to drag Mika to the exit, knowing that Mika has no chance of survival. Mika angrily shouts for Yu to leave. Barely managing to hold back his tears, Yu dashes to the exit with a heavy heart. Mika is happy to pass away, knowing that this was the first time Yu called them his family. Outside, as Yu shouts out in pain and grief, he stumbles in the snow, only to be found by a group of humans who ask him if he wants to help them in their quest to eradicate the vampires. Hugging the man after losing his entire family, Yu states that he's ready to do anything if it means killing every vampire in the world. Four years later, we see a more mature Yu in a military uniform, 
casually walking among the debris of the destroyed city. He remembers the time he spent with his family in the vampire city where they were all happy together. However, their happiness ended abruptly when the vampires murdered them. Yu is also tormented by the thought of leaving Mika behind to die while escaping. Four years later, Yu fights a monster known as a Horseman of John to take revenge against the bloodsuckers. <laughs> disobeying his orders and resulting in being suspension and punishment. To return to the army, he has to cooperate and make friends, but he is struggling to do so. Shinoa Hiragi becomes his surveillance officer, tasked with keeping him in check and making sure he doesn't make any violations. He remembers meeting Gurren Ichinos, the man who found him on that cold night and promised him the opportunity to kill vampires. However, he has not kept his promise as of yet. In the locker room, you notices some teens bullying another boy. Although he initially wants to ignore the situation, he decides to step in after one of the bullies threatens to feed the boy to the vampires. Shinoa informs him that fighting civilians is a violation, so with no other alternative, you ends up getting beaten and becoming the errand boy of these bullies. <laughs> The boy, Yoichi Sadomi, apologizes to you for involving him, and notes that he has been trying to get close to one of the bullies, in the hopes of using his supposed connections to join the elite unit, the Moon Demon Company, and get revenge for his sister who was killed by a vampire after she managed to protect him. Later, a vampire escapes from a laboratory, and Yu decides to avenge his family by killing her. He interferes before she can bite a student and engages in a fight with her, although the vampire seems to easily regenerate every injury you manages to inflict. <laughs> Yoichi appears and manages to stop the vampire from draining the other student's blood. Enraged, she attacks Yoichi, but Yu blocks her attack. In a fit of anger, she grabs Yu by the throat and jumps out of the window with him, but he manages to stab her in the stomach as he lands on the ground. However, the vampire is unharmed and prepares to deliver the finishing blow. Thankfully, Gurren appears and manages to end the vampire with his cursed sword. As Yu falls unconscious after his new friend Yoichi falls on him while hugging him, he dreams about his family being happy that he has finally managed to make a new friend. They tell him that they can finally stop worrying about him. As they leave, Mika's image tells Yu not to live for revenge and to take care of his friend instead. Yamanaka prevents his companion, Yuji, from opening a room covered in spell tags. As they leave, Yuji looks back and the door opens slightly. On the school's rooftop, Yu receives a love letter from the girl he saved from the vampire. Shinoa shows Yu her cursed gear, Shikama Doji, which amazes him. Yu attacks Shinoa to test the weapon's strength, but she overpowers him with no effort. <laughs> Yamanaka and Shishido chase after Yoichi, begging to become his disciples. They want help in finding their friend Yuji, who entered the forbidden chamber and never returned. Yu, Shinoa, and Yoichi agree to help and go to the chamber. As they enter, Shinoa explains that the weapon inside holds a demon weaker, but similar to her cursed scythe. Yu tries to seize the cursed axe from Yuji, who is controlled by a demon, as he desires more power to face the vampires. The demon attempts to possess Yu, but he expels it after seeing through its illusion of his brother. After seeing this, Shinoa says she will recommend Yu for the training class. In the vampire castle, in the same place where Yu managed to escape from, Farid nonchalantly calls out to an older and surprisingly very much alive Mika. In a ruined city district abandoned by both vampires and the Japanese Imperial Demon Army, a horseman of the apocalypse attacks a group of humans. Thankfully, Mika, now a vampire, intervenes and kills the horseman, earning the gratitude of the humans. One of his fellow vampires mocks him for trying to protect the humans, since in his eyes they are only livestock for them to feed on. However, he praises Mika for his strength and asks if he really became a vampire by drinking the blood of the third progenitor. Mika remains unfazed by his taunts and casually walks away, noting that he has no interest in proving anything. While the vampires claim the district and announce that they will protect the humans in exchange for their blood, Mika is approached by a girl he saved who offers her blood to him. Looking at her, he reminisces about how cruel Tapies turned him into a vampire four years ago. In a flashback, we see that shockingly, Farid was only pretending to be dead. As the seventh progenitor, he could have easily evaded the bullet even at such a close range. Cruel theorizes that he allowed you to escape on purpose. She demands an explanation from Farid since one of her two seraphs managed to run away, while the other is on the verge of death, referring to you and Mika. After a brief altercation with Farid, where she casually smacks him away like a fly and pins him to the ground. <laughs> Cruel then turns to Mika, offering him eternal life. However, without thinking twice, he refuses with his dying breath. Annoyed and claiming he has no choice, she forcefully feeds Mika her blood while kissing him. 
Back at the high school, Yu stumbles into a pink-haired student, and without saying much, the two hotheads start fist fighting. Shortly later, a bruise Yu meets with Yoichi and Shinoa, ready to attend their special lesson with the Moon Demon Squad Lieutenant Colonel, Gurin. After a short introduction, <laughs> Yu goes to take his seat but is shocked to find the same pink-haired student sleeping with a book on his face in his chair. The two recognize each other and soon enough, they start bickering again, while the rest watch on in mild amusement. <laughs> After the lesson, the pink-haired student, introduced as Shiho Kimizuki, visits Gurin in his office, claiming that with his talent, aptitude, and top grades in every subject, he should be guaranteed a trial for the highest-ranked Black Demon series cursed weapons. Gurin nonchalantly questions his motive for wanting to rush and gain strength. Although he notes that he knows of his situation with needing money and unrestricted treatment for his little sister, which the Moon Demon Company can provide, Buren points out that in his current unstable state of mind, the demon within the curse gear will easily feed on his desire and possess him. Shiho isn't convinced, so Guren releases his cursed sword, demonstrating how demons feed on rage and desperation, while Shiho can only tremble in fear, unable to move. Guren ends by saying that the current Shiho has no chance to wield a cursed weapon. Later, the students begin their combat test against some cursed army puppets. Being handcuffed to each other, Yu and Shiho have a rocky start, dragging and bumping into each other. The test is momentarily paused as Shiho is summoned to the hospital since his sister is in critical condition. Afraid that he might fail to make the selection for the cursed gear, Shiho decides to continue the test instead. However, when Yu finds out about his situation, he punches Shiho, saying that he'll never see his sister again if she dies. Now in the hospital room, the doctor informs Shiho that his sister managed to push through this time. However, with the current treatment, she won't be able to survive much longer. Shiho resolutely states that he'll soon join the Moon Demon Company so his sister will receive the best treatment. Meanwhile, you can only listen dejectedly as he's still handcuffed to Shiho. Outside the hospital, you and Shiho proclaim that they won't let anything get in the way of their goals and eventually accept each other, forming somewhat of a friendship. In the vampire city of Sangunum, an announcer warns of the humans gathering and attempting to expand their territory, even attacking and killing their fellow vampires in the process. With this, Cruel declares war against humanity, proclaiming that the vampires will preserve the balance of the world. Cruel Tapies declares war against the Japanese Imperial Demon Army, accusing them of experimenting on the Seraph of the End. While watching the events unfold, Mika vows to rescue you. Meanwhile, during a meeting, Gurren falls asleep, prompting General Tenri Haragi, Shinoa's father, to reprimand him for his behavior. Unfazed, Gurren walks out and ends up meeting you, who demands his cursed gear. Eventually, Gurren agrees to give him a chance to make a contract with a demon and gain a cursed weapon. <laughs> In another location, Mika ignores Farid's attempt at taunting him and returns to his childhood home where he lived with you and the rest of his family before becoming a vampire. However, he accidentally scares the new children living there with his new appearance. Later, Yu receives his test paper, which displays a zero, making him embarrassed, as Shinoa shows everyone his test paper. Guren then puts the students through a test of endurance by releasing his demonic weapon and pressuring the students with its aura. Yu, Yoichi, Shiho, and Shinoa are able to withstand it. Guren explains the contract ceremony, also noting how they must be determined to do anything, even if it means dying. Once they arrive in the restricted room, Gurin explains that every weapon they see is the highest ranking cursed weapon with Demon King sealed within them. He informs the boys that they must not give in to the demon's temptation if they wish to succeed. They each pick a weapon, aside from Shinoa. Yu chooses a katana-style sword and draws its blade, which begins the trial. An eight-year-old Yoichi witnesses the murder of his sister by vampires, who leave after killing her. Yoichi sees his sister's body, and when he speaks to her, the demon in the form of his sister informs him that she is replaying his deepest memory, and that she is dead. Meanwhile, an adolescent Shiho watches over his sister Mirai, who is similarly the demon in disguise, and she tells him he can leave his sister behind. At the same time, a child Yu is confronted by a demon in his orphanage, where the demon offers him power in exchange for revenge. Akane's voice warns Yuichiro that he cannot have power without dedicating himself to revenge and his family, which is just an illusion by the demon, telling him to forget love. Still, Yu manages to successfully overcome the demon's temptation and sign a contract with it. The demon later reveals its name as Asuramaru and warns you not to trust humans. In the present, Yoichi confronts his own demon, who takes the form of his deceased sister and offers to earn his revenge for him. <laughs> Initially, the demon manages to possess Yoichi, taking over his body and attacking his friends, but Yu manages to appeal to the possessed Yoichi, trusting that his friend will not attack him. 
This helps Yoichi break free from the demon's control and rush over to you to apologize for almost hurting him. <laughs> Meanwhile, we see a vampire squadron flying in an aircraft carrier heading to Tokyo, with Mika present. He wakes up to his alarm clock, wears his military uniform, and heads to the subway where he meets Shinoa. She informs him that the vampires are planning to retake Shinjuku. After meeting with their squad leader, Gurren, he introduces their new squad member Mitsuba Sangu, a veteran with a blazing personality. The group then heads out to complete their mission. While on the way to their destination, they encounter a young girl being attacked by a vampire. Yu disobeys orders and saves the girl, leading the squad into a battle with the vampires. Despite being scolded by Mitsuba for his actions, they succeed in defeating the vampires and escaping back to their base. <laughs> The young girl thanks you for saving her, and although Mitsuba is gentle with the girl, she still notes that she can't stand you. Later, while taking a shower, we see a flashback of Mitsuba's past where like you, she disobeyed her orders, which led to one of her team members sacrificing himself for her to live. She now lives with that regret and trauma in her heart. After things calm down, the young girl reveals information about the vampires that held her captive, and soon enough, the squad heads to the location revealed, intending to save the children kept there. The squad enters Amotsando Station to face the seven vampires. They see humans treated as livestock, who although not held forcefully, cannot escape because of the monsters outside. They manage to kill a few of the vampires, but to their surprise, they find out that the girl who gave them the information had deceived them after the vampires threatened to kill her family. They are then ambushed by even more vampires. Mitsuba is grabbed by one of the vampires in the ambush, but Yu manages to save her while the rest hold off the remaining vampires. After killing them, they meet with army soldiers, and the child who apologized for tricking them is reunited with her family. Shinoa mockingly notes that Mitsuba is falling in love with Yu, but Mitsuba angrily denies it. Yu then reveals that he was held in a vampire city when he was little, but tells Mitsuba not to poke her nose in his past. Still, Mitsuba thanks him for saving her. The squad finds an army Hummer and after Shiho hot wires it, they drive along the road to their destination, but eventually encounter a tall red-haired progenitor vampire armed with a first-class weapon. They try to attack the vampire by crashing the Hummer into him, but he easily stops the car with one hand, Superman style. As the squad prepares to fight and protect each other, Yu manages to stop a sneak attack from the vampire aimed at Shinoa and knocks the sword out of the vampire's hand, impressing him. However, two more noble vampires appear, and the group realizes their situation is dire. Shinoa notes that their only option is to fight at full power, releasing their curse mark and letting the demons almost possess them. Thankfully for them, the vampires who introduced the progenitor as Crowley Useford inform him that the seventh progenitor is awaiting his arrival. Dejected, Crowley agrees to spare the squad and leaves, but reveals that he could have instantly killed all of them, leaving the team in shock and horror at the knowledge that they almost died. Vampire helicopters approach the Shinjuku walls, where the Japanese Imperial Demon Army soldiers use their bows and arrows to keep the helicopters at bay. The commander warns that if the vampires make it through, they are done for. But as he ends his sentence, he's shocked to see a cargo plane filled with explosives heading directly for them. Meanwhile, Yu and his squad are in a building in Shinjuku, where they hear announcements of the vampire attack. Shinoa and Mitsuba explain to Yoichi that the gear the soldiers are using is called Enchanted Gear, a lesser version of Cursed Gear. The humans and vampires clash, but with Yu's and the others' help, they manage to win. <laughs> Later, Corporal Nagai thanks the team for their help and orders them to head west for vampire extermination while he takes care of the defense line. Elsewhere, Gurin spots Mika and Farid overlooking the battlefield. Farid mentions that drinking directly from a human is outlawed in Sangunum. Mika recalls Sangunum four years ago when he refused to drink human blood after becoming a vampire. But out of hunger and desperation, he uncontrollably had to feed on Cruel's vampire blood, becoming her direct servant. While heading to their destination, Shinoa presents some pills to the team, informing them that this is a quick way for them to increase their strength. One pill amps them by 1.5 times, while two pills crank it up to 1.8 times with serious side effects. However, taking three pills will directly cause internal damage and kill them. The group is separated in a helicopter attack, but they manage to escape underground in the abandoned subway. Meanwhile, Mika sees an explosion, and one of the vampires he was with turns to ash after someone attacked him. He looks up to see Gurren standing amidst the smoke, preparing to engage him in combat. Finding themselves in the subway, Yu and Shinoa realize they've been separated from Yoichi, Shiho, and Mitsuba in the attack, and they still have the unconscious corporal with them. Thankfully, Shio calls to them from behind the rubble, saying that they're alright. 
Yu tells them that they'll split up momentarily while they escort the corporal to the medic camp, after which they'll meet again at the defense line. They quickly agree and part ways. After killing the vampire next to Mika, Gurren points his blade at him, slightly frustrated that he didn't manage to kill the commander instead. Meanwhile, Farid tells Mika that the humans seem to have dispatched their elite soldiers, the Moon Demon Company. And indeed, shortly later, Gurren's squad and the rest of the Moon Demon Company arrive to fight the vampires. Having arrived at the medical area, Yu recalls fantasizing with Mika about escaping to the outside world without vampires, but now he can only bitterly think that the outside world is nothing like they envisioned. Shinoa brings him out of the daydream, informing him that the corporal is alright, and they can now leave and meet with the rest of their squad. While walking, they overhear a conversation between some of the higher-ups and realize that the rest of their squad is in trouble in Central Park. Without wasting a second, Yu decides to head to Central Park and help his friends. Shinoa tries to stop Yu since they're needed more on the front line, but she realizes he has already made up his mind, and she can only follow Yu to provide backup for their friends. At the Shinjuku 5th Street intersection, Gurren manages to kill a few more vampires while fighting alongside Sayuri, and after a brief pause, the two plan to attack the commander. Meanwhile, Farid watches over the battle in wonder and orders Lacus and Rene to hold off the rest of the humans while he toys with Gurren. He then suggests that he and Mika fight Gurren together, but Mika states that he can fight Gurren alone and proclaims that he'll regret pointing his sword at him. While running to Central Park, Yu thanks Shinoa for coming with him, but she says that since they're like family, of course she'll come to protect her family. Soon enough, they reach the park to see Yoichi, Shiho, and Mitsuba surrounded by vampires, exhausted but managing to hold on and fight back. One of the vampires manages to take Shiho by surprise and almost lands a hit on him. Thankfully, Yu steps in and blocks the vampire's sneak attack, while Shinoa counterattacks the rest of the vampires. After defeating all of the vampires, the squad can finally recuperate, although Shiho tells Yu that their orders were to assist the front line and questions why the two of them are here. Yu notes that although he trusts them and knows of their strength, he will always come to their aid and never abandon them, no matter what. Having regained their stamina, the squad now proceeds to their task, prepared to kill every vampire. Meanwhile, back at the front line, <laughs> Gurren praises Mika's strength after he comes out unharmed in the aftermath of an explosion that manages to demolish a whole skyscraper, but reveals that it was just a distraction for the trap laid by Shigure. The combined surprise attacks momentarily overwhelm Mika, giving Gurren the opening to deal the finishing blow. However, at the last moment, Farid steps in to block Gurren and swats him away like a ragdoll. Hi, Mika -chan. <laughs> Realizing that they're outmatched, Gurren decides to take another pill, knowing that they have no chance of survival otherwise. Still, before he can do so, Mika attacks again, not giving Gurren the chance to use his pills. Thankfully, Yu's squad arrives promptly, and Shinoa orders everyone to take their pills, rescue Gurren, and quickly retreat. Before they can reach in time, Mika stabs Gurren, and in a blinding rage, Yu charges at Mika, managing to pierce him with his cursed gear. However, while looking at each other, Mika and Yu can only stare at the other in shock as Yu realizes the vampire he stabbed is his brother. Upon seeing Mika fighting Gurren, Yu refuses to activate his curse and kill his only remaining family member. <laughs> He then apologizes to Mika for abandoning him back then, as he barely managing to stop himself from breaking down. But Mika comforts him, saying that he did nothing wrong, and promises to save you from the humans. Meanwhile, Gurren and the rest of his squad scold you for letting the enemy survive. Farid steps in, adding fuel to the fire, saying that he can save you from the humans by turning him into a vampire as well. However, Mika is enraged upon hearing this, threatening to kill Farid if he so much as lays a finger on you. Farid claims that he was just joking and instead promises to take care of the other humans while Mika rescues you. Mika notes how Yu has made new friends, but states that Yu is too kind and that these humans are taking advantage of him, since he has witnessed the greed of humans firsthand. Soon, Crowley and his servants arrive as well. Seeing this, Gurren orders a retreat, but Farid blocks Yu's path. Seeing his childhood captor, Yu starts attacking wildly, losing all forms of composure. Witnessing this, Gurren rushes back, trying to support Yu, and before you know it, the vampires engage the humans in all-out combat. Soon, Farid manages to take Yu by surprise and grabs him. Thankfully, just as he previously said, Mika attacks Farid, managing to cut off his arm. In the confusion, Mika picks up Yu and runs away. A short distance away, the two start talking, and while Yu asks in apprehension if Mika is still human, Mika asks Yu to come with him, claiming that the humans are just using him. However, once Yu sees his teammates and friends being drained of blood by the other vampires, he throws Mika to the ground, refusing to abandon the only friends he has made. 
In his rage and desperation to save them, something sinister within him awakens. One of his eyes turns bloodshot. Meanwhile, in his inner world, you asks his demon, Asuramaru, if she's trying to possess him, but she denies it, claiming she has nothing to do with it. Instead, she tells him to look at the sky and confirms that Mika's words are true. The humans are planning to take advantage of something within him. We then see trumpets lowering from the clouds, with angel-like creatures flying toward you. Asuramaru eerily states that the monster within you is about to be released. Back in the real world, you start screaming out in agony as his face morphs from the pain, and the right side of his body grows a devil-like wing covered and dripping in black miasma. Guren smugly looks on, while Mika and Shinoa realize that the humans were indeed experimenting on you. <coughs> Having lost all sense of self and reason, you indiscriminately attacks Mika, sending him flying. In the next moment, he turns to Crowley. Surprisingly, a single swipe of Yu's sword is now enough to destroy a whole city block, and even forces a progenitor vampire like Crowley to avoid and dodge his attacks. Not only that, but Yu's speed and reflexes are now on par with Crowley, dragging him around like a sack of potatoes. He even manages to parry every single attack with no difficulty and overwhelms Crowley with his attacks instead. Although forced to retreat, Crowley seems unharmed and only complains that the humans created a scary monster like you. Farid even questions Guren, but the latter refuses to reveal anything. Still, Farid guesses that this must be the result of the human experiments they have been conducting. Unfortunately, in the mayhem, Yu loses sight of Crowley and spots Shinoa, attacking her instead, disarming her and almost dealing a killing strike. Thankfully, Mika steps between them and receives the blow instead. With a last-minute call, Guren tells Shinoa that she can still bring you back. Having no other option, Shinoa dashes to Yu, managing to hug him and call out to him, begging him to return to normal. Although just barely, Yu manages to stop himself from harming Shinoa and transforms back to normal after vomiting the black liquid within him. Afterward, he faints in Shinoa's lap. Giren then reveals to Farid that they were only trying to stall for time. In the next moment, we see Major General Shinya Haragi aiming his cursed rifle at Farid and firing an attack that releases flame tigers, almost managing to kill Farid. As the dust settles, we see the rest of the Imperial Army, along with Lieutenant General Kirito Haragi, having arrived to provide reinforcements. As the conflict comes to an end, Shinoa, with an unconscious Yu on her lap, turns to Guren and states that she has some questions for him. However, he nonchalantly walks away, telling her not to waste her breath because he won't answer anything. Back at the base, Shinoa enters an underground area and visits a restricted area guarded by two soldiers. Initially, they deny her entry, but she still asks what this hidden facility is used for, and one of the soldiers confirms that it's a lab used to conduct vampire and human experiments. After taking out an elaborate pocket watch with the Haragi crest, proving that she's part of the Haragi family, she asks for entry once more and this time the soldiers are forced to oblige. Before leaving, one of the soldiers asks Shinoa why someone from the Haragi family like herself would remain at the rank of sergeant. She casually states that she's not interested in participating in the army's power struggles, as that's the reason her sister died in the first place. Inside the facility, she sees what looks like an endless corridor of cells, each holding multiple feeble vampire captives. Further inside, she spots a door and hears painful screams coming from behind it. Peeking inside, she witnesses a very advanced and high-tech laboratory filled with scientists, carrying out various tests on what looks like vats and vials of blood. Entering one of the offices, she sees Guren silently reading a report on some test results. Guren dismisses her without even looking, but she disobeys and approaches him directly, stating that Yu is still in a coma and asking what he's planning to do to him. Looking at the pills on the table, Shinoa thinks back to when he ordered her to give you a special blend of drugs, supposedly because his cursed gear was unique. But she now realizes that was simply just a cover-up. Guren avoids her questions and simply says that human experimentation is the only way for a weak species like them to survive in this apocalyptic world. He even reminds her that countless human lives were used so that her sister could complete her research and development on the cursed gear. With that, he sits back down and orders her to leave without hearing anything else she has to say. However, before she leaves, he tells her that the drugs take five days to wear off, so you should awaken soon. He ends by saying that if she really cares for you, she should be at his side when he wakes up. In Yu's hospital bed, Shinoa realizes that she might be falling in love with him. Meanwhile, we see a flashback to the aftermath of the battle, where Mika tries to grab Yu, but is stopped by an annoyed Farid who reveals he was playing with Mika all along, <laughs> treating him like a mere child. 
Back at the Sangunum, we find out that the vampires have detoxification pods capable of removing curses. As Mika exits the pod, he finds out that although he's still a vampire, he can still shed tears like a human. In the changing room, Lacus and Rene try to spark a conversation with Mika, but he ignores them as usual. Surprisingly, the pair reveals that the humans are researching forbidden magic called Seraph of the End, which supposedly has the power to destroy the whole world. What's more, they reveal that the vampire's real goal in attacking the humans was to retrieve you and the power within him. Awakening from his coma, you barely manages to hold back his tears of happiness after finding out that his brother, the person he thought had died for him to escape, is still alive. Shinoa enters the room shortly after, amused at seeing you cry, but she recounts to him the events following his blackout after he reveals that he doesn't remember anything that happened after meeting Mika. She also reveals that Mika was taken away by the vampires after he passed out, and tells him not to even think about trying to attack the vampires by himself. However, you notes that for now, knowing that Mika is still alive is all that matters to him. Yu then leans in close to Shinoa, touching her cheek and moving her hair to the side. He asks if she's alright from her neck injury, while a flustered and embarrassed Shinoa confirms that she's fine. Soon the rest of his squad members come in, interrupting their romantic moment, and start joking around with each other. Yu interrupts them, saying he's glad that they're alive and grateful to have friends like them. Later, while looking at the full moon, Mika and you both promise at the same time that they will save the other. Surprisingly, we end by seeing Gurren sign a letter and head out, while Farid waits atop the roof of a building, handing all of the vampires' research data to his unrevealed partner, noting how serious this mysterious individual can be sometimes. This concludes the Seraph of the End Season 1 anime recap. If you would like me to continue with Season 2 of this anime, let me know and I will provide it as quickly as possible. Make sure you subscribe to see the next season and know the latest updates. Feel free to share your thoughts. I'm out. Hi, Mika-chan. <laughs>